And our session, as you know, today is just about lean thinking. Um, so to get you going, just a, a quick, a very quick introduction of myself uh, before we get into the session in itself. Uh, some of you have seen this. So um, I've been doing this uh, job in training and consulting for close to 30 years. So hopefully, uh, again, for today, very short session, uh, maybe you can say something uh, hopefully useful to all of you uh, in a very compact way. So, and that's just a bit about myself. And uh, it, that, let's, let's hear the, the, the more exciting part. So the one that you should see on the, on the, on the, on the screen is actually the boring part. Let's, let's hear from you. Um, so I need you to uh, take part in our quick discussion, maybe a bit of interaction as well. And uh, for those who have uh, worked, uh, if you have worked previously or currently in a Japanese uh, kind of a culture company, could you please type one uh, for those who have worked for Japanese company before? And for those who have not, just type two. So it's just one or two in your chat box. Okay, so, nope. Okay, it's scary. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. So thank you for your participation. So give you a sense of uh, maybe some ideas of, of where we come from. And, and also, as you know, our topic today is about lean thinking, uh, the concept of lean management. Uh, if you have been exposed to that before, either formally or informally, whether you've been trained uh, in lean before or Six Sigma or whatever, um, if you could just uh, type yes, just type Y if you have been exposed to that before, and uh, please type no if you have not. So it's, it's kind of Y or N, yes or no. Okay, a bit of, yeah bit of yeses and a couple of no's, uh, not to worry. So let's get the thing going. So thank you for letting us know. And uh, so maybe we'll just look at the picture in itself. Uh, I, I hope that th this picture doesn't uh, spoil your dinner. Uh, it is an example of housekeeping issue. And um, so you're free to kind of type in the chat box. Now, assuming you are in charge or you're a manager or a supervisor, uh, what would you do uh, in terms of managing this uh, simple example, this simple issue of housekeeping? And uh, so what are the possible solutions in terms of managing the cleanliness or the housekeeping of the toilet? So uh, feel free to type in things on the chat box and we can actually get you to take part in this in a very short while. So uh, maybe I can start yeah, uh, in terms of the thinking behind, uh, in addition to, you know, this, the, 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 the thing that I'm going to type down would be, you know, add more frequent cleaning, uh, either, either cleaning staff or, or the, the personnel, or you kind of increase the frequency of cleaning. Uh, communicate to the users to click clean. Okay, fantastic. Using languages, right, that create interest. That's fantastic increase cleaning frequency, educate users by posters, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you so much, uh, Jenny, Grace. Um, and uh, an in interesting thing about Lean is, is that, uh, well, here's, here's the good news. It's not as scary as Grace has mentioned. mentioned. Uh, but if you look at this carefully in the, in the context, you if you increase the frequency or you put up the signage, uh, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, except that you're looking at the context of Lean, uh, we typically want to look at the fact that can that help us to solve the problem? Uh, perhaps the origin of the problem. And, uh, and therefore, if you look at another picture, depends on where the toilet is, find a corporate <laughs> um, office issuing keys. Okay, fair enough. So thank you, Ellen, for your contribution. So, and I'm offering maybe an alternative. And to do that, if you could look at a, a kind of, a, I've kind of inserted a small picture within this thing. Change the bin to an open top. Fantastic. Grace has a, uh, I think so far Grace is in tune. So you're in the right direction. Easier to pin it. That's true. You know, people just throw it. So what we like to do as we going to relate to the concept of lean thinking in a very short while is that we try to look at the root of the problem and we try to see is there anything that we can actually do? 
So thank you all for your contribution. And if you look at the, the smaller picture, which I've just inserted, uh, you can see that there are three things, uh, the location of the three star, one of which is the uh, location of the dustbin or rubbish bin. The other one is the tissue location, as in a circular box over here. And you have the basin. So you got three stuff, right? Three in one. So, so far, if you increase the cleaning frequency, not wrong. Put up the signage with interesting, you know, signage, pretty languages, not wrong, no problem. And the, of course, the other option is to, uh, you know, issue keys and then don't encourage people to simply use a toilet uh, or they have to use a different kind of a toilet. Uh, all these are fine, but you can see uh, of all the answers, changing the bin to an open top is a slightly better example because it facilitates the throwing of the rubbish. Okay. What I do want to highlight to you, if you look at the smaller picture, as I mentioned, the three items, uh, the tissue, the rubbish bin, as well as the basin, uh, if you combine those, Three in one, uh, this is a picture I took from Changi Airport. Um, you can see that there's this space in here and the rubbish bin, the outlet, as well as the tissue beneath the mirror. So the three in one. Now, if you, you can see that there's a, there's a contrast between the earlier picture and this. And because of this, ladies and gentlemen, how many of you agree that you will save a lot of time or cost or effort in terms of cleaning the toilet? If you look at this picture, if you agree there's a lot of time, effort, uh, resources spent, please type yes, or you can type agree. So thank you, Carol. Yep, okay, thank you. So, and that's my short, very short introduction. A much better way, right? Agree, thank you, uh, in the context of this so I will, I will get into that in a short while, the definitions and what to do with this. Um, then let's look at another picture. This is a, a, a towel, and I'll like you to take part in the discussion. Uh, the, the picture that inserted, the smaller one is a carpet. So ladies and gentlemen, which one do you think is better in terms of, you know, the you know, setting up? Do you, put, do you think towels is better or carpet is better? So for those who put to think towels, you can type T, and if you think carpet is better, uh, type C. Let's assume that this is in the office, not the garden, yeah? So it is indoor, so you have two options, carpet or towels, which one is better? So towels, Kelly, thank you, T, T, Josiah, thank you, Joe, carpet, carpet, okay, Ellen, Carol, carpet, fantastic. If it is indoor, yeah? And Jenny says T, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, this is very much, much contextual. If you have a special reason uh, to use towels or cupboard, then please do so. But overall, the big picture, you got to start thinking about this is between cupboard and towels, which would require more time, more effort, and even more cost to clean. So uh, if you look at this too carefully, I believe most of the time the answer would be towels. More, uh, less time, less effort, maybe less cost to clean it up, right? Um, so, and because of that, unless we have a very special reason, maybe it is a VIP room. So we're gonna use that room to welcome uh, VIPs, customers, or it's a product showroom, whatever it is. Uh, however, in a, in a typical office environment, uh, unless we have a fantastic reason, and if we have a towel which is uh, non-slippery, for example, uh, and then people don't move around a lot, uh, then that would be fantastic. So, so that's the a, a quick introduction to that. Uh, I hear some background noises. Uh, if you could mute your mic, it would be fantastic. Uh, later on, we have opportunities to ask questions as well. Thank you so much. So that's my quick two introduction. Uh, the message is that if you have selected something, uh, you would be accidentally increasing time, cost, effort, whatnot, in order to do our job. So we will get into that in a much greater detail. And that's our introduction to our lean thinking, ladies and gentlemen. Um, 
It's very short. It's systematic reduction or elimination of wastes. And, and because we have a small problem at the moment, the word waste is so subjective. So what is waste, what is not waste? And as you can see just now, the examples as in the case of toilet, uh, having a less efficient toilet setup would add waste because we need more time, more effort, more money to clean. Likewise, contrasting between towels and carpet. Uh, however, unless there's a very good reason, then it will be a separate method altogether. So that's what we want to contend ourselves with in the context of lean thinking. Looking around, uh, is there anything that actually at time and cost and all those things without actually having the necessary uh, advantages or good stuff out of that? So that's our introduction on lean. And I wanted to get into something that you might think is, is strange. So this is slightly more challenging of our next question, right? But before we get to that, uh, I'll, later I'll give you some examples of wastes and for us to identify. And uh, of course, if you look at the next example, uh, something more uh, challenging. So, and then later we'll come back to the reduction and elimination of waste and of course, identification of waste. So if you look at this, um, you know, examples, if looking at a big, bigger picture, uh, just now it's a toilet and carpets and towels. And now we want to go into the businesses side of the story, the organ organizational part of the stories. Uh, please allow me to ask a silly question. Uh, not you're silly, the question is actually silly, or it, it might appear silly. And everybody look at the screen. Do you agree that universities should secure services of top professors and lecturers? Uh, if you agree, please type A. If you disagree, please type D, as in disagree, for that question. So those who agree, type A. <laughs> By the way, it's not a trick question to catch you, yeah? Um, so, but I, I think logically, the answer is, yeah, on the fence, that's fine. Oh, you're in education business. Uh, agree, generally, all right. Fair enough, depends on something. And, okay, Alan, agree. Uh, cost depends on your definition of top, okay. Uh, top dollar doesn't mean great value. That's, that's fantastic. And uh, yeah, top as in, okay, well-known, uh, popular, prestigious, et cetera, et cetera. And that's an interesting thing because we wanted to talk about this. Yeah. And the concept of value add uh, uh, is the sort of, you know, waste is non-value add and therefore value add is just the opposite of waste. Uh, top mechanics may not be great tutors and great lecturers. Okay, we we'll see you know where you're coming from. Depends on definitions of top and top dollars and give good values and so on. Okay, and uh, uh, I just want to talk to you because the, the concept of lean uh, thinking just now we introduced the generics, right? But now we wanted to go deeper and we like to look at the customer side of the story. So, who are the customers of universities generally? Uh, perhaps uh, maybe students and their parents. Okay. And, and that's is interesting because I, I myself, I'm a, I'm a parent. I've got two grown up kids and they're both working now. Uh, but most of the time, if you're a parent, so maybe you look at the choices. Yeah. Uh, so I, I wanted to maybe type in something for you to take part in the, a quick discussion. Maybe type in something here. Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, when you look at the stuff that I typed in here, yeah, uh, this example, uh, if you're the parent, would you be looking for prestige? As in like Ivy League universities, top lecturers, top professors and whatnot. Or you're looking at employability if you're a parent. So, and uh, those who would look at employability, if you could just type E, and those who look at prestige, if you could type P, please, uh, if you can just get, no, okay, employability, thank you, thank you, Aaron. So far, almost all of you type E. 
and and this is significant because uh, we do not classify that you know universities having top lecturers are wrong, but we are looking at the fact that from the you know the, the concept of lean thinking is what does your customer want, and therefore when you look into that, if the majority of the customers are average parents, uh, they may not have choices, they may not have the financial choices uh, to order the relationship choices to send their children to Harvard, MIT, Oxford, Cambridge, you name it, right? Uh, then I think as customers, in this case, parent, if they could actually secure the, the, the position of the children, their kids, if they could graduate from a, a normal university, but recognized, accredited, and they can get employment very easily. So if most of the parents think like this, then this is what we consider value add. So there's no wrong answer. Now, if you are different kinds of parents, if you're aiming you know, your kids to put them in, say, Harvard, Cambridge, uh, then the value add is securing top professors and many, uh, lecturers and that sort of things. Okay, so that is our thinking behind linking the concept of waste. It's the opposite of value add. So meaning if you spend time and effort to do that, then it's actually considered a waste. Now, my point is this, ladies and gentlemen, if majority of the customers in this case are looking for employability, then you could be adding more time, more cost to secure the services of the top professors and lecturers. So in this case, we call that a waste. Not that the top professors or lecturers are a waste, but waste in this sense, we are actually doing more than we should be doing. And therefore, we are actually spending more time, more effort than necessary. So that's an example, a, a deeper kind of a different example versus our understanding of waste. So, so I'm going to take, just take this away and uh, to just take a short pause to see so far, especially for those who are new in this area, lean thinking. Uh, if I have confused you, just type yes. <laughs> type a Y if I've confused you. So that we have opportunity to uh, you know, ex you know, explain this a little bit more. Okay, so none. So let's talk about the way. So we'll be talking about ways and we give you some examples like universities a little bit deeper. And, uh, and let's talk about identification. So now how do you tell whether a job or an activity or a work processes, how do they add value? Are they, are they waste or are they adding value? So how do we tell that? So there are a few criteria here, which I'll be working with you on. So, and, and as we go more and more detailed now, in terms of helping you to identify your ways. Uh, the first thing about ways is this, when you do your job or task, uh, you can apply it at home as well, yeah, by the way, um, either personal stuff or job related stuff. You gotta ask the question, the kind of job that you do or task or activities, does it improve anything? If the answer is no, then that job or activity is a waste, okay? So if I take a very uh, interesting example, yeah? um, if you, again, depends on, on the, the kind of job that you do, it's very specific to the industries and the context, right? Uh, does it improve every, anything at all? So if you're doing, uh, say, sales, right? Uh, general, I just use the word general sales. If you're doing sales, um, if you, you know, get in touch with the customers, you build up a good relationship, uh, it improves the relationship and therefore it improves sales and therefore it's not a waste. But if I take a physical example, um, if you're in the office, if you're carrying a document, physically carrying a document, not electronically, uh, you're passing a document from one uh, section to another section, does that job improve anything? And if the answer is no, then it is a waste. So this is one of the first criteria for us to actually identify. Now, the history of all this is all started in the manufacturing sector, but now it's been used quite widely in services, 
education, hospitals, uh, engineering services, and so on. So the, the, the company that made this very, very popular is, of course, Toyota, right? So there are a lot of things that they, they carry, including warehousing. So, so I'd like you to answer a very quick question. Um, if your organization is having a, a, maybe a storeroom or warehouse, do you think the existence of the store, is it a waste or it's not a waste? And you can, of course, key in. So those of you who think that a, a store in an office or a warehouse in a factory, if you think it is a waste, please type yes. And we kind of link that to the first criteria that we talk about. Does the warehouse or the store improve anything at all? It's a waste. Okay, it's a waste. Thank you. Minimization of good stores. Yeah, it's a waste. Thank you so much. Uh, and the, the challenge of store and warehouse is like, I, I've, I've got a kitchen, you know, and uh, my kitchen at the moment is half full. And, and guess what? Someone is going to fill up the kitchen <laughs> uh, cabinet. So, uh, waste because everything should be precise, etc. All right. Now, I'm going to type the answer in for everybody to see. Uh, park it outside where it's cheaper. Okay, that's fantastic. So, you guys are doing well in understanding of waste. Um, I would type in, if your organization is this, warehousing business, meaning uh, you are charging people for storing goods. So you're providing a service. In this case, a, a store or a warehouse is not a waste. It's value add because it adds value to your organization. Okay. But if you, are, if you are not related to warehousing, if you just build up a warehouse, uh, as in a factory, if you are just having a store, as in an office, then we actually consider that as a waste because it doesn't really improve anything at all. Okay, so that's our first idea. Uh, so the other point about waste identification, the second point is this. If your customer is looking at the job that you're doing, would he or she pay for it? And if he or she doesn't want to pay for that, then that job or task or activity, it's a waste. So for instance, you know, I, again, it depends on the context of, of what you do uh, in, in a training environment. So uh, let's say we forget about the work from home uh, period for the moment. If you were to go and attend the training uh, in Adventist, uh, learning, at Adventist Learning School or in any other learning schools, uh, physically when you arrive and you, you look at the, the, the setup and then um, if, they are, if, if, you, if you saw the trainer or the staff doing some job and you feel good about this, yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's okay. You know, I should pay for that. Then that's called an added value. Uh, but what if, yeah, what if you arrive at the training school and uh, you, you looked at the staff, maybe the cleaning lady, uh, she's using a five-star, very environmental friendly, but very expensive uh, carpet cleaner. And then would you pay for that carpet cleaning agent that, you know, it's very expensive? Uh, if your answer is yes, then that job is added value. If no, then say, okay, cleaning carpet, none of my business. I'm just here to attend the training. The carpet is okay. The towels is okay. The table, table chairs are okay. Trainers are okay. Notes are okay. I'm fine with that. In that case, the cleaning of the carpet using expensive uh, materials to clean is a waste. So that's the second criteria. And the third criteria is this, which I think... It's hugely significant. Uh, if you look at a job that you do, or task that you do, or any activity at all, if you change that, or you cut that activity, you eliminate that activity, would there be any difference? Uh, when I say difference means that the customers, uh, this is very much customer-centric. Yeah? The customers doesn't even know that there's any difference, meaning, the service is good, your, your on-time delivery is good, your quality is good, your you know, uh, SLA, service level agreement, you fulfill all that. There is no difference 
then if the customer could not detect and they don't complain about it, then if you could eliminate that kind of a task, that task is called a waste. Uh, sometimes my job is in trouble. <laughs> um, and and we're, we're going to discuss this because um, in, in the context of what we do, we, we really live in a competitive world and uh, there's always distinct differences in, in you know, there are always champions of everything, right? And therefore, it is something that we work on. Uh, if you look at this very carefully, I think all of you know, um, again, pandemic or not pandemic, let's look at the old overall picture, right? Uh, you would probably know that Singapore is not a cheap place, not a cheap place to start a business, right? Uh, wages are higher, rentals are higher, and then the, the curious part is that why are still investors coming to Singapore? So there are certain things that Singapore could add value, right? And all of you, you know the answers. What are the things that add value in the case of Singapore to attract the so-called investors to come? Not the wages, not the rental. What are they? So, and I think you know the answers. Logistics, rule of law, political stability, etc. Et so there are different customers are looking for different things. Uh, there are foreign investors, they're looking for cheap stuff, uh, not, don't care too much about, say, intellectual property right, uh, don't care too much logistics, I just want cheap, 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 then they go to somewhere else. Okay, so that is the part about this. So what I'd like to do, um, I should put this in before Grace answered her question, right? Um, I could just pick a department. Uh, as, as an example for that is, uh, maybe I'll just pick procurement, okay? So, and the question to all of you is this. So maybe I'll just type it in, procurement. Uh, for those who are from procurement, don't worry, yeah? So this is nothing wrong with you <laughs> or your department. So, uh, how many of you think that we can eliminate this department procurement? Please type yes if you agree. We don't need procurement. So, you either type A if you agree or you can type Y if you it says yes. Uh, so, uh, Joe, I, I hope you're not uh, you're not from procurement, <laughs> but I, again, I have to say, if you're from procurement, not to worry. Uh, we are not here to cut the departments. We're just behind the thinking. Is procurement something that we can actually say bye bye to? Okay, and uh, that depends on the kind of technology that you have, right? The kind of you know the work that you do. So, if I could just give a, a, a practical example. And uh, this concept I will type on the screen. And it, you might or might not be familiar with this. It's called VMI. It consists of quite a lot of things. Vendor Managed Inventory. Now, how it works is this. So, uh, assuming that uh, I'm a customer, I'm actually buying this uh, marker pen. Okay. Uh, I can buy it from the shop or from... Uh, bigger companies, the bookstores or, you know, NTUCs and whatnot. Um, so if you want to buy this, when, when, when you pay the item, there's this thing called barcode, right? So the cashier, you can do it, you can do the self-scanning or the, the cashier will scan it for you. And, uh, and then the price would appear. So, yeah, Jenny said it right, depends on the business you're in. So I'm just giving you an example. If you just scan this and then, the, 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 the cashier, the screen would show the amount that you need to pay and you pay the amount, right? But after scanning, this piece of information also goes to the central information, minus one, this stock number or this uh, particular product, minus one from the store. And that minus one from the store that information also electronically goes to the supplier of this. In this case, it's Schneider, for example. So, so from the supplier's side of the story, 
they could see, for example, the store sales dropping. Uh, sorry, the quantity dropping from the, the up as a result of the sales. So they can actually see, imagine a screen here. The supplier can see each and every branch as long as it's their product, which product, which unit, what quantity, slowly decreasing in the stock quantity. And therefore, with that, we do not need the, you know, the processes. We do not need to have uh, things like this. So this, this is the second part that I would like you to think about. Uh, procurement function will always be there. So, and um, even if you outsource some of the items, you still need someone to look at the, you know, the, the procurement part. It is a strategic function. Um, you still need someone to look at the contracts, the documents and whatnot. But certain processes like the common ones, things like uh, purchase order, uh, purchase requisitions. And if you adopt the approach that I've just shared just now, there is no necessity to do all that job. And uh, you don't even need to get quotation. You don't even need to get to come up with this thing called purchase requisition. And uh, you don't even need to get the approval of the bosses. You don't even need to issue the PO or purchase order. Okay, so because the supplier on the screen, all you need to do is you and this company you come up with a contractual agreement that you, if you see my Jurong East branch or my Changi or my Pasir Ridge uh, branch drop below certain level, then you automatically replenish a certain quantity. That's all you need, a contract or an agreement. And the rest of the processes in between, at one go, you are able to eliminate. So the idea of waste has been, you know, changing and morphing is, you know, it's been evolving as well uh, due to the arrival of technology and many, many other things as well. And I, I quite agree with Jenny, it depends on the business you're in. So, and therefore, that is the, 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 the part about purchasing. So in, in this context, so you may not be able to reduce, but these are the three guidelines that I, I would recommend. You look at a job, does it improve anything at all? Uh, any efficiency improvements, uh, any improvement in customer satisfaction, right? Uh, any improvement in uh, cost reduction, saving time, saving cost, improving quality, improving customer satisfaction, uh, improving sales. If not, then it is a waste. So likewise, it goes to the rest as well. So, okay. Um, what I'd like to do next is that um, to officially share with you the seven waste. Uh, it was uh, extracted from the manufacturing, but now it's been used differently, different words in uh, different industries right now. So officially, this is a list. Uh, before we get into that, uh, we have actually gone through the quick definition of waste and we'll give you some pictures to look at. Uh, then we look into the university portion Spending time unnecessarily on something uh, is also called waste. And then we get into the examples of this. So now officially the seven wastes. Um, and this is actually has been modified to suit uh, various industries now. So it's structured identification. Uh, if you are doing more than necessary, then it's called waste. Uh, for instance, I'll just give a very simple example. Uh, if you are photostating something, uh, if you make more than the necessary copies, then it's a waste. If you do more reporting than necessary, that's a waste. All right. Uh, if you send email electronically, uh, if you CC too many people who don't need to receive that, it's actually a waste as well. Okay. So that's just one example. Uh, the second waste is don't need time to explain this. It's just waiting or delay. That's another example of waste. So something to, you know, something structured to actually help you to identify. Uh, third is movement and handling. So in other words, what this is saying is that uh, unless there is a need, you should not be carrying things to move from one spot to another. It's called waste. 
okay, unless it's absolutely necessary. Now remember, we say this in the context of does the job improve anything at all? If you're just carrying a document from point A to point B, there's no improvement, there's nothing that you can actually claim to improve anything. That is an example of waste. Uh, item number four, repeated or unneeded processing. So this is the coupled example versus uh, Tao's example. Uh, as I've said, unless you have a very good reason, uh, coupled is actually a waste because it's unneeded and unnecessary. Extra job for us to do it. So uh, number five, too much storage. We talked about this already. Wrong methodology, wrong ways of doing things. And of course, the last one is mistakes, uh, errors, it's waste. So with that in mind, yeah, and uh, I, I just want to give you a, a quick case uh, for us to comment on. Uh, sorry, I, I, should, I should delete this. Uh, okay. So I'm just type something on the screen interview form. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this case is something like this. Uh, assuming that you have applied for a job and your application was, you know, it looks good. Your resume, your CV looks good. And your prospective employer would actually call you in for an interview. Okay. So upon arrival for the interview, uh, how many of the organizations they actually have this, uh, you know, a, a form, it can be electronic or it can be physical, yeah? So, uh, so here's my question. Is this a waste? No, when you arrive for an interview, they get you to fill in a form, or before arrival, they get you to fill in an electronic form. Do you think that this is a, a waste? Or it, is it not a waste? So just type yes or no. Okay, some of you, Josiah, is a waste. Okay, most information required in a resume and CV. Yep, yep, Elephant is more efficient. Uh, uh, info already, and CV, yep, okay. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, the, the answers are, are, are perfect, very good. Depends on the info, the need for form, you repeat it, then it's a mistake. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a waste. That's true. Uh, at this form, whether it's physical form, or electronic is actually a waste. And um, it is a waste because the information, I think Jenny and some of you have put it quite correctly, the information is already in the CV. You know, the NRIC numbers, your qualifications and whatnot is already a CV. So you don't need people to write again. But what I'm actually worried, it's not the person who's filling in the form, in this case, the candidate, right? But once, you get people to fill in the form, either physical or electronic. Then we are also adding a lot of work for the company itself, right? Storage, filing, electronic or physical, lots and lots and lots of extra work. So there's the danger of waste in itself. It has this kind of like a iceberg concept, right? Uh, you know, the one that pops up from the ocean, you know, sea level, just a little bit, but embedded within, there are lots and lots of subsequent ways because of that. So if you look at the interview form, if you cut the form away, what other things associated with it you can also cut at one go? So if you have the form, whether it's physical or electronic, what are the other additional wastes? or things that you, know that you can actually cut, assuming you are able to cut this form away. So let me just type something, uh, then the rest can chip in. Fouling, be it electronic or physical, right? So that you can cut that away, so that takes time. And there are lots of other things that you can do, uh, storage is a waste and then people read about it and so on. Uh, what about, some of you mentioned, which I, I think is valid, uh, what about the information is not 
uh, in the CV, right? The information is not in the CV. So is this interview form a waste? And I'm, I'm here to share with you the answer is still a yes. It is a waste. Why is that? So, so if info not in CV, it's also a waste as far as this form is concerned. And, and the reason for that is that it is a waste. It is the organizational mistake not having to publish, you know, during the, uh, you know, the job vacancies, you know, they didn't actually publish the kind of information that they want. And therefore, the organization has made a mistake. And now, because of the mistake, we introduce a lot of waste into the system. And what about if they advertise it and people, you know, during the process of application, they don't fill up the form correctly. They don't apply properly. There's some missing information. And uh, so, and because of that, we also call that a waste um, because we, in our opinion, uh, that candidate just self disqualifies himself or herself. Uh, meaning, if if an advertisement says that a job vacancy says that I, I need this information, and you don't provide the complete information, you have just self disqualified yourself, right? And that's that's an interesting contrast because uh, there are a lot of uh, very uh, capable HR managers they just reject a lot of this application because the candidate is not serious. Um, so that's, yeah, the PDPA, data production, get the uploaded CV form, how the CV is done, so all necessary info is there, that's right. So, so it's not necessary to do that. Um, so the form in itself is this, is actually uh, what we call waste. So, so we'll be talking about lots and lots of different kinds of waste um, to actually help you to think along. And that's the idea of lean thinking. Um, and the, the question next I would like to work with all of you is the, just give you some examples, you know, assuming that you are able to identify the wastes, what are some of the tools for you to manage waste, to reduce waste? Uh, because in the definition of waste is systematic or, uh, sorry, systematic elimination or reduction of waste. So what are the tools that we can have? Good news, you do not have to work in a Japanese company to come up with the tools. The first tool is what we call DIY, do it yourself. Meaning, uh, uh, so this is not trying to be funny, uh, as long as you can come up with your own version to help you to reduce or eliminate waste, it's good enough. We don't need fancy stuff. Anything that can help you to reduce time you know, unnecessary time to reduce cost, reduce waste, it's fantastic. Hence, I put down DIY. But along the line, there are others as well. Uh, I won't go into all of this. So there are lots of lots of tools to actually help you to systematically reduce or eliminate waste. The first item value curve is used in the non-manufacturing industries. It's the similar example that I mentioned just now top professors in the universities, if the value is employability, the value curve will show that hiring top lecturers or professors is actually a waste. Yeah, again, this is the focus is on employability. In manufacturing, they have a different version of value, we call value stream mapping, VSM. Then you have other stuff, Kaizen, standardization, Pokayoke, whatever, you know, so I, I won't go into all that, but those are lean tools. Now, at the end of the day, here's, here's what you do. Please do not be impressed by people who can actually have all these. Yeah? Uh, don't be too impressed by them. Right? So if, if, they, if they, sorry, if anybody told you that they, they actually have, uh, you know, uh, they, they actually have all those stuff, right? It, uh, you know, people told you, I, I know this, I know that. Because at the end of the day, you still ask one question. Having known all that, where is your waste reduction? So this is not being sarcastic. This is another layer of value as well. 
a lot of people who have lots of knowledge, but they can't solve the problem for you. So in that case, it's a waste. Now, um, I, I just want to pull out all this and just give you one last input. Uh, I will go into one example of waste reduction tool, and that is standardization. Okay, so some, some tip uh, to help you, which I, I think it's extremely helpful to help you to reduce or eliminate waste. So out of the long list of tools. So the concept of standardization in Lean is this. Uh, if you could please bear with me for a short while. Uh, the key features are this. You look for words which end with EST, as in best, as in, so you can see on the screen here, all those, the, the superlatives, as you call it, right? Uh, um, this complaint and many, many others. So those, those very nice with the entry ESD, the best, the cheapest, the fastest, uh, the most efficient, uh, or not. And so what you do next is you actually go and uh, do those stuff. Learn from them. Whoever that does a very good job. Uh, it, it can be a person or a department. So you, you pick up the best, you learn, you copy, and you try. That's standardization. Now I'm here to share with you a different take on the meaning of standardization. Um, so here's the, the, a quick question for everybody, a quick quiz. Yeah? Uh, how many of you think, uh, assuming that our organization requires us to wear uniform, let's assume that. Uh, how many of you think that wearing uniform is an example of standardization? Please type Y, Y for yes. Okay, the question again, assuming that we have, our company has uniform, and uh, how many of you think that wearing uniform is standardization? Please type yes. Uh, please type no if you don't agree with that. Thank you, Carol. Carol says no. Nope. Okay. Good. Congratulations. You guys are expert now. Depends on the value add in some cases, like police, as it does. Uh, Joshua, thank you for your input. Uh, and in this morning, I think Grace was in my course on essential manager skills on KPI. And, and the, the context of value app is this, you know, uh, you have to ask this question. After wearing uniform, uh, does the crime rate reduce? You know, is there a reduction in crime rate? Uh, if the answer is no, then uh, we do not classify that as standardization. Okay. However, uh, we do not say police should not wear uniform. Uh, we do not say your organizations, please don't wear uniform. We are just very specific in the context of definition that wearing uniform in lean thinking, again, lean thinking, yeah, is not standardization unless we have the ability to secure good results. That's the meaning of standardization. Okay, therefore, uh, you can continue to wear uniform, right, unless you can say that you know, if I wear uniform, my sales increase 7%. If I don't wear uniform, my sales drop. Uh, then in that case, wearing uniform is standardization. So we are taking a very pragmatic approach in linking standardization and link. So in short, standardization is find the best, learn from the best, copy from the best, and then try on ourselves. Okay. And uh, the easiest example, the practical ones, uh, I, I, even though I have not worked for, you know, with you before your organizations, and uh, if I could just type something here uh, that you can actually see on the screen, right? Uh, give me a second. So, now I, I wrote down resignation rate. So let's say if your department, you have been suffering from high employee turnover rate, then you can apply this standardization as well. How do you apply that? Same formula. Okay, so look for 
in this case, best is lowest, yeah? Excuse me, I just scribbled on the screen. You, you go and look for your colleagues or other departments that has the lowest employee turnover rate and be humble enough to learn from them and to copy from them and try it in your own department. Okay, so this is an example of standardization. Um, they can easily apply. So uh, you can apply in different areas, like for example, sales, you can apply in employee turnover rate, uh, you can even apply in, say, discipline. If your company, if your department has poor discipline, you can also learn from those who have discipline. Again, at the end of the day, we're very interested in how we can actually homogenize the whole system. And that in itself is lean thinking already. If you're not learning from the best, then you are actually continuing your waste. So if I could say that. So if you're not learning from the best, you are continuing your waste processes. So learning from the best, picking from the best in standardization helps us to reduce or eliminate our waste. So this is our contribution as far as uh, this portion is concerned. Uh, we have a bit of time for any question uh, if you do have. So, and uh, you can type the thing on the screen. I will you know, for any question, you can think about it. Uh, while you type, I just want to show this screen. Uh, if you're interested in this Lean Thinking course, we do actually have it on the 21st of May, somewhere next month. And uh, there's some uh, you know, incentives. If you if you register early, there's some discount. And of course, you have a great food voucher as well, $50. So while we look at the screen here, and let, let me know if you have any questions that I can actually help you with, with uh, the short time that we have. State management more applicable for industries. Uh, thank you, Grace. The answer is yes and yes. <laughs> Lean management applicable for all industries and all companies. The answer is yes. Uh, originally, it started in manufacturing, but now it's been spread across. So uh, I think all companies, all industries can ill afford to have lots of wastes. Um, Thank you, Grace. Other questions, please? From the, uh, can be from Grace as well or from any uh, others. What do you think in this COVID situation, how to apply lean in business? Fantastic. Um, I, I can give you a fantastic example. You know, Adventist is the organization that does this, right? This uh, free webinars and promoting the, the training. I, I wanted to tell you this really, um, it's a, such a privilege to partner with Aventis. I, I've been in this industry for close to 30 years, right? And I, I'm, I've been working with lots and lots and lots of training companies. Uh, Aventis is one of them. And Aventis actually prepared this way back in February. They started to uh, video record trainers they started to plan this out. And by doing that, they are actually learning and they are trying to apply webinars. And this is even before the work from home started. So can we apply this in COVID situation, how to apply lean in business? Yeah, continue to learn from the best and continue to reduce waste because um, the, 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 the challenge with some organization is that um, they got very confused between working from home and staying at home, right? So working from home can still be very, very productive. There are lots of things that you could do. And um, so in, in this session, I can recommend something. Yeah? If you apply lean in the context of thinking is, you know, start thinking about the three things that I've mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, the first thing is this. Can... Can I cut any activity or task? And yet, after cutting those activity or tasks, I would not still, I wouldn't compromise on the outcome of the job that I do. So that's the first thing. Second thing is try to take away things that you think if the customer is watching you now, they are not going to pay for it. That also is a waste. Okay. And the third thing, of course, is the kind of job that you do, keep asking the question, does it improve anything at all? So that is the area that you can actually apply in lean 
you know, context in business. So it depends on your department. If you're doing sales, uh, most salespeople will say, you know, customers are, are not keen and, and those things. So uh, we believe that it's a waste, but this is a time where, you know, everybody is gloomy and it's your time for you to go to, to give some sunshine to customers, you know, get in touch with them more often, uh, not physically, but we, we, we live in an age where we are really, really fortunate because of the electronic media. So any, maybe a couple, uh, is this full day course eligible for work share? Um, the, you can get in touch with um, the administrator, uh, Abigail and uh, the Adventist school will actually address that question. Uh, they have uh, full information on that. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not able to answer that question. So, so you can please uh, get in touch with uh, amenities. Okay. Thank you. Um, so with that, if you have any further question, that's fine. If not, um, Hopefully I can see you, even if we, I don't meet you in the training itself, maybe you can meet some other time, some other uh, platform. Uh, thank you so much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for your time. Really appreciate it. And uh, I, I just want to wish everybody good luck and please be healthy and uh, have a wonderful week ahead. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.